uh, hi everyone welcome to this session so let's solve this very interesting uh, interview problem so you can see uh, there is a uh, like MOS and GMS circuit and we have to find what is the looking in impedance from this uh, inverting node okay of this GM and so all of this will be in the small signal uh, like a small signal domain right so I have make this ground okay because small signal like in the large signal there will be some bias here so I make it small signal uh, AC ground okay and here is a load cap of CL so how to we can solve so you know we have to apply a TH voltage uh, at this node and then we have to find what is the current actually coming out of this uh, voltage source right and then we have to take R in as V test over I test right so now let's do it so now so if we apply here a V test so what is the current flowing through that branch so it will be GM times right that VD so that is your actually VD and here actually your VD is a minus V test okay so this current IG let's say so IG will be that capital GM times your okay minus of GM times your V test right so this is your IG now this current has to go from like two 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 paths this path and this path right and what is the voltage here so ultimately uh, we can assume the okay so what is the looking in impedance here can can you tell what is the looking in impedance here so ultimately so actually this is not actually correct uh, for the let's say for some sake of uh, easy calculation we can assume it will be 1 over gm2 right because this is a uh, normal MOSFET and we are looking from the source right but actually it is not 1 over gm2 because this impedance actually from that node impedance actually not a small uh, like not a small impedance because actually this gate impedance is actually too large okay okay just do the do the things by KCL and KBL then we will uh, see at the end so how we can uh, reach this conclusion so easily okay by some intuition okay okay so now we can see so okay so okay so this IG will be flowing through these two branch now we can assume there is a some there will be some voltages right so what is the voltage so let's assume there is a okay, okay let's let's remove it okay so this two current will be the sum of the sum of these two current will be IG okay so let's say this is I1 and this is I2 and again so from here to here so it is nothing but a current buffer right so the same current will be flowing through that branch as well okay right but yes again you have to uh, some path so that it like so you may assume that you may think that if there is a high impedance so no current can go through it right but it is not the case because it is a current buffer so current can flow through that branch okay for sure because you know the current buffer is nothing but input impedance is in, uh, like very low and the output impedance is very high so that is the meaning here okay so don't be con confused okay 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 so yes so yes so now so let's say this is a v out node here so i can assume so this is our v out node so the current is nothing but v out like i am writing as i2 will be nothing but v out over 1 over gm2 so it will be gm right gm2 i2 and what is your ion ion will be nothing but this impedance uh, like this v out over this impedance okay so it will be v out over 1 by scl so it will be scl right so now i can directly write that okay so actually your IG becomes V out will be taken common it will be GM2 plus SCL right yes exactly so now okay so that so 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 actually so this is one of the equations that is okay but actually what is your ID that is actually matters here right so this current will be here as well this will be I2 as well okay right so the I2 and, and what is your I test? So I test will be nothing but your. So this current is coming in the direction. So I2 will be the negative of this uh, 
like I2 will be the negative of I2, right? Okay, okay, let me write it here. So, your I2, so just we can replace it. And what is your V out in terms of your V in? So, you have to find it as well, okay? So, actually, we have to replace uh, the V out in terms of your V test. Okay, so now I can replace it here. So, actually, yes. So, your IG is minus GM times VT from that equation, okay? Equals to V out into GM uh, 2 plus SCL, okay? Now, what is your V out? Your V out is actually uh, minus GM vt over gm2 plus scl so now v out is here in terms of vt now we have to find what is i2 so i2 is nothing but this term right so your i2 from this equation so i2 is so v out i can put the v out value here so it will be minus gm times vt over gm2 plus scl times gm2 Okay, so now it will be our how much it will be our minus it i test right because this is the equation and in the picture this it is flowing here and the i2 is flowing here. Okay, so it will be negative of that because no current can go through that branch. Okay, so just we have to solve uh, uh, like vt over it. So it will be vt over i2 will be so this negative cancels from each side. So, you will be having, so yes, so it will be GM2 plus SCL over GM into GM2, right? So, now this is actually your RN. Now, if I can make uh, something like, uh, okay, so it will be, let's say, can I take common GM2? That's not really. So, we can assume it will be 1 over uh, GM, right? Capital GM plus SCL by GM into GM2. Okay. So, this is actually your R in. Okay. So now can you can you tell about what is the significance of this RN now? So RN is this that is there is no there is no question. But you can see there is a uh, S term present here and RN actually proportionate to your frequency S, yes, right? So do you know any component that that uh, his uh, like it, its impedance actually increases with respect to frequency? Yes, there is an inductor, right? Because the inductor impedance XL is nothing but S into L, right? So, actually, from this node, you can actually assume there is an inductor present here with respect to ground, okay? So, if I redraw the picture and make some... So, actually, from this negative terminal, there is effectively a inductor is present with respect to ground, okay? Now, let's say... If I make some changes here, so if I make a capacitor here, okay, because there is in the indicator side, there is always a parasitic cap, okay, and sometimes we use some Miller cap, okay, so increase that capacitance not too high, okay, so there can be some problem you will be face for sure, okay. So now let's say you have a capacitor here now, right? So now what is the impedance looking from here? So here, so from here you can see there is a uh, LC branch, right? So L LC branch always produce a complex pulse, right? So this is the uh, like difficulty when you have a circuit like this and a parasitic cap is always present there. So actually in this node there is a complex pole, and to compensate this, so actually it is difficult to uh, uh, compensate this so that your overall circuit or overall loop becomes so stable. Okay, so this is the significance. So you can find what is the pole from here. So you will find a plus like 1 over root LC, right? 
रेडियन पर सेकेंड ओके ओके सो दिस वाज़ द क्वेश्चन आई थिंक इट इज प्रीटी इजी सो मेन थिंग इज द इंडक्टिव फेनोमेन इज हैपनिंग हियर एंड इफ यू हैव ए कैपेसिटेंस अक्रॉस इट सो देयर विल बी कॉम्प्लेक्स फॉर फॉर श्योर सो दैट इज एक्चुअली डिफिकल्ट फॉर अस टू कॉम्पेंसेट सो नाइसली दिस सर्किट एंड एक्चुअली दिस इज ए वेरी कॉमन फेनोमेन एज वेल लेट्स से इफ यू हैव ए टू बैक टू बैक जीएम कनेक्टेड इन दिस फैशन so there there is a complex hole and there is called gyrator okay gyrator so this kind of phenomena you will find okay i think this will be like this so let's say gm1 gm2 so from here actually the complex pole is formed this is called some gyrator things okay okay thank you so you can put your valuable feedbacks